So in this problem, uh, I'm, I've got this hollow bar. I want and a stress strain curve for it. So I basically I want to figure out, okay, if I go to 100 kilonewtons on this, what is the elongation? Next thing I want to figure out is, hey, let's say I go even higher, up to 360 kilonewton, let go of it. What is it going to snap back to? What is that permanent elongation of the bar? So um, I think the first thing I will do is go ahead and find that slope of the initial proportional part, which is going to be my modulus of elasticity, which again is just stress over strain up to that yield point, which is going to be uh, 250 megapascal, so that's 250 times 10 to the 6th, all over the strain, which is 0 0.00120, which equals uh, 200 gigapascals. So that is Young's modulus. That is the slope of that line that I've got right there. Now, let's figure out. Uh, let's figure out. I guess the area. Let me do that first. So the area of my um, specimen here is going to be essentially 0 0.05 times 0 0.05. That's 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. That's the outside. Okay, and then I take out the hole, which is going to be 0 0.04 times 0 0.04. And again, that's because I've got uh, 5 millimeters on each side. So I take off 10 total on each side uh, for that inside hole. That leaves me with the area of that specimen to be 0, 0 0.0009. Okay, so now I've got that area. Why didn't I move that? Zero 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 nine. Okay. Um, so now I've got that. Now I can go ahead and figure out what kind of stress I had with a hundred kilonewtons. So at hundred kilonewtons, which is a hundred thousand newtons, divided by the area, which is going to be in cubic meters, zero point zero 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 nine, I get a stress of I thought I had that written down somewhere. Give me a second. Oh, that gives me a stress of, here it is, one, one, one. Uh, then that would be megapascals. Okay, so that guy's only up to 111, so that's below the 250 yield point. Okay, so um, to figure out what the elongation is, then I just basically say, okay, well, the elongation, just rearranging my Young's modulus, my elongation is just going to be that 111 megapascals. So that would be, I guess, 111 times 10 to the 6th all over the modulus of elasticity. I don't Okay, so uh you divide that by the where was it? Uh, the 200 gigapascal, so that's going to be 200 times 10 to the 9th. So the elongation at this point, the strain at this point is 0 0.000556 uh, and then my strain or my elongation I guess is what they're actually that's my strain my elongation is just then that strain times the original length which is going to be 0 0.000556 times the original length which is 600 millimeters which is, that elongation is 0 0.33 millimeters, okay? Now, if I stress it to 360 kilonewtons, okay, um, the stress on that is going to be 36000, zero 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 Okay, divided by the area, which is 0 0.009, oops, one, 
one, two, few zeros. We need another zero. That gives me the stress on this guy to be 400 megapascals. Okay, where 400 megapascals is, I don't know, somewhere right around there. Okay, so I'm beyond that yield point. Okay, so the question is, once I get up there and I let go of it, what happens? Well, what happens is, you know, as I'm stressing it, I'm heading up in this direction, up the um, stress strain curve. When I let go of it, it actually falls back at the same um, slope as the, you know, the, the modulus elasticity. This is what I'm looking for. That is my permanent elongation of the bar, okay? Uh, there's a few things I need to do to kind of figure that out. I know the slope of that line. I know the height of that line, right? Because I know this is 400 right here, right? So if I can figure out that, well, I can figure out that, I guess. That distance, um, I'm going to find just using the fact that I, kn the, I know the slope and I know the rise, so therefore the run. So again, my slope is 200 times 10 to the ninth, right? My rise is 400 times 10 to the sixth. What that leaves me with, I'll call this value A. So we'll call that A. That tells me from that that A equals 0 0.002. So that's basically how much that thing falls back. What I need to find, though, in order to find the, the permanent elongation, I need to find this total. I, I need to find the strain that it's gone out to at this point uh, right there, right? So I've got a triangle. Hopefully this doesn't get too messy. I've got this triangle right here, right? Okay, so I'm going to look for this distance, which I'm going to call B. Okay, and of course I know, or I can, basically I'm going to use similar triangles to figure this one out. Okay, so I'm going to say B over 150, right, because I went from 250 up to 400. Okay. That's going to be equivalent to, that would be 0 0.05 minus 0 0.00125. That's basically the run of the whole triangle uh, over 250, right? So that's the whole triangle going from, you know, 250 up to 500, okay? I'm only going up to 400, so the question is, okay, well, what's that B then, that B value? A lot of this is just, you know geometry at this point. So that B value becomes 0 0.02925, right? So what that means is that total distance is those two things at A plus B added together. No, that's not right. Um, the the um, Oh, the, the point zero zero one two five plus the point two um point zero two nine two five. So either way this then becomes zero point zero three zero five, right? Therefore that permanent strain that I have there is just going to be that point zero three zero five minus point eight so that then becomes it's getting a little messy in here but that then becomes um, 0 0.0285 and again that's because I know the total distance I pulled off the point two it gives me that so the permanent elongation then is that 0 0.0285 times the 600 which means, which gives me 17.1 millimeters. So again, just let me explain kind of what's happening. So I take this past the yield point, 
right? Up to 400 megapascals. I let go of it, okay? It slides back down, okay? The original slope that I had, okay? It doesn't snap back as far as it used to be. It snaps back to a new length. That new length is now 617.1. That, that's a permanent set. That's an, a permanent elongation of 17.1 because I went past that yield point. And a lot of this is just understanding slopes and drawing triangles and figuring it out. But I want you to understand the concept of going past that yield point and uh, unloading it and knowing where it backs up to.